Hi everybody, this is the first in a series of tutorials for assignment M2A3, modeling a SketchUp model from AutoCAD. So we're using the Healing Garden site that you all worked on in the first section of the course. And so before we can actually do anything in SketchUp, we need to go back to AutoCAD. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time working through this, I'm just going to review the process, uh, how to go and set this up. I talked about in class how one of the key things in AutoCAD is just having really good drafting. You need to have, make sure lines connect other lines, everything's uh, connected using O snaps. You don't have any gaps, you don't have any overlapping lines, extra lines, duplicate lines. And you can use things like the flatten command to make sure that you get the elevations out of everything in here except the contours. The contours are the only thing that should have elevation. Everything else should be have a Z value of zero, whether it's a line or a polyline. Also, generally speaking, you want to take splines and convert them to, convert them to polylines. <clears throat> splines, when they come into SketchUp, get broken down into a series of really tiny line segments, which is really difficult to work with. So polylines you want to keep, but the exception is you want to make sure you explode those polylines if they have arcs in them. If they don't have arcs, they're fine. If they have arcs, you need to explode them to make sure that the arcs and the line segments are now separate entities. And that allows the geometry to come into SketchUp intact. There's only two types of, other than lines, there's only two things that come into SketchUp intact. And that is arcs and circles. And because they come in as the original entities, we can use the info panel in SketchUp to change the number of segments in an arc or a circle and smooth them out if we need to. If they're splines, they'll come through as all these line segments and we can't do anything to adjust them. If they're polylines with integrated arcs and lines, same thing happens. When you bring them in, it just breaks them down into their line segments and we can't adjust them. So that's really important. Now, in terms of the process of choosing how you write out different groups of information, my approach, and I think this works pretty well, is to take think about the hardscape, the elements that actually would be placed on the landform, roads, curbs, sidewalks, planting beds, edges of lawns, edges of planting areas, those types of things. Everything else, contours, plants, benches, any furnishings, uh, walls, steps, all those things need to be brought in as separate elements. And we do that using the W block command and with the assist of layer isolate. So if I want to create the basic uh, set of hardscape elements in this drawing, I'm going to use the layer isolate. And remember, before you do this, go to settings, make sure it's off and off. You don't want to lock and fade, you want to turn things off. So in this case, oh, the other thing you need to do uh, that I mentioned today in class is, in, if you have a site property boundary, you can use that. In this case, I don't have, I didn't have a boundary because this is a site within the overall Mount Nittany Medical Center site. So I drew these lines in here that are in kind of purple to create a boundary. I intentionally made them so they overlap the contours. In other words, the contour lines extend slightly beyond that border. That will allow me to use this to create surfaces in SketchUp. It will also assist in making the terrain model uh, and kind of defining the boundary of that. It changes it a little bit, but if you don't have that, it doesn't quite work as well. And that also means that you can look at the contours and extend them through and make sure that they're all where they're supposed to be. Okay, back to the hardscape. In this case, I want sidewalk. I want curb, inside a curb, outside a curb. I don't know if they're on separate layers, so I'm going to click both of them. Uh, this type of sidewalk, that type of sidewalk, just to make sure. If you're not sure what things, what layer things are on, just click extra. The building footprint, I want that too. Uh, oh, there's a little service drive down here, separate layer, I want that. I think that's it, gonna give it a shot, enter, and there you go. <clears throat> and that actually looks pretty good. So I didn't include the steps, there's stairs here, there's stairs here. When I drew this, I extend these lines all the way up. This allows me to use, use these lines to create a surface in SketchUp. Then I will add the steps as a three-dimensional entity in SketchUp. The veins that are in here as part of this design, I'm going to bring those in separately after I've already created a surface. 
if you bring all that in, the lines in the sidewalk, if you wanted that, parking lines, you just don't want to do that the first pass through. It's too much complexity. It makes it impossible to form surfaces. You need to have this very simple and clean, just like this. Once I have this, I'm going to use the W block command. And W block allows you to select a group of objects and export them as an AutoCAD file. So I will click Select Objects, select them, right click, choose this. Uh, this is uh, my hardscape, which I already have here. Choose save and OK. Of course, it's asking me if I want to replace it. In this case, I will say yes. Once you're done, back off and do a layer, un layer unisolate. So the next step would be things like, <clears throat> I'm not going to export these because I have them, but if I was going to do it, how about the steps? Just one thing, boom, there you go. And within the steps, I've got these railings and other stuff, but I can export those as one group. The other thing I would do is export the walls. So I can export those. Uh, in this particular design, there's a bunch of boulders. I would just select them. Sorry, get out there. Layer isolate, select, enter. And there's all the boulders, both around the water feature area, the main plaza, uh, the lower plaza, and this little seating circle out here. And again, just use W block, write those out, and create a set of files. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to have really good geometry in AutoCAD. If you have bad geometry, SketchUp is going to have a really hard time with it. That may not be true of Rhino and some other things, but in SketchUp, it's really important because SketchUp only understands lines and surfaces. So these, all these polylines in here, they're going to come through as individual lines. Now, remember, I think I mentioned this. The one thing is even this is I've already done this, but if you have polylines that have arcs and tangents, explode them. We need to make sure that that happens so that the arcs come through as arcs and not a series of line segments. All right, so that's the AutoCAD spiel. That's what we need to do with this. You group those things out. I'll do another tutorial that involves the plants as blocks. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. For right now, uh, we're just going to bring out those main elements, building, paving edges, sidewalks, create the hard surfaces that create this hardscape that we're going to use in SketchUp. So back in SketchUp, I just opened a brand new document. There's nothing in it. I'm going to get rid of Lisan, sorry, uh, because uh, when all these different files come in and from AutoCAD, they're going to come in in their original location, and it's just easier if I can zoom to extents and go right to what I'm looking at. If she's down here at 000, that creates a problem. Let's go to File, Import. The first thing I want to do is bring the hardscape in. That's all those lines that I just showed you. Now, one of the things that's really important when you're importing into SketchUp from AutoCAD is to click on the options and make sure you've checked Preserve Drawing Origin. If you don't do that, every layer you bring in will not be lined up. And uh, if you remember in the W block command, if you noticed it, uh, it was actually the units were set to feet. I have the units set to feet here, so everything, come, everything comes in at the right size. As long as I know that's set, click Import. Give me a little audit about what just happened, and I can't see anything. So yeah, I'm going to go down here to Zoom Extents, and there we go. <clears throat> now the first order of business is to turn this into a bunch of surfaces. Clearly, it's just a bunch of lines right now. Uh, in class, you remember I talked about using a little plugin called Change Arc Segments to make these arcs a little smoother. I am going to wait and do that until after I uh, create surfaces. I think some of the issues that I had <clears throat> when I did the second time had to do with changing these arc segments before I created the surfaces, but we'll see how it works. Now, if I just select this and use one of these plugins that's really helpful, SU for you, make face. Now, initially, it looks like it's pretty good, but when I click on this, you can see well, my curb isn't, you know, it's just, it's going through everything. There's lots of thick profile lines. It really didn't do a good job. <clears throat> and I also noticed that I'm missing my circle and my planting bed. So I'm going to go back and do that again. 
and that didn't work anyway. So here we go. Back to AutoCAD. Let's do another layer isolate. Get it right this time. Curbs, sidewalk, site boundary, building edge, service drive, paving, paving. I think, let's check it. Enter. Okay. Wow, I'm still not getting that. Let's back off. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Paving. Ooh. Service drive. Just make sure this is on the same layer, which I think it is. Enter. Oh, forgot the building. One more time. Layer isolate. That curb. Outside, inside, sidewalk, paving, sidewalk, paving, building, service drive, enter. Whew, finally, got it. Okay, so that's what I want. That was my original file that I just replaced with the wrong one. I want to make sure I have this little seating circle and this edge of the planting bed. There's a, a mound here that has plantings on it that helps screen the, uh, the uh, seating area from the entrance road out there. All right, little review. W block. That is not what I wanted. Okay, right click, recent input, W block. Select. There we go. Enter. Now I can replace my hardscape. Yes, I do. Okay, let's try this again without the oops. Import hardscape. And there it is. All right, remember what I did? I am going to use uh, uh, extensions. It says extend closed lines. That's an amazing extension you can get from smuster.com, and it just helps clean up the geometry quite a bit. Once I've done that, I will choose SU for you, make face. And now I actually have everything kind of broken down exactly the way I need it. Okay. <clears throat> so that's ready to go. Uh, if I want to, I can come down here and maybe clean these lines up just because I don't like them hanging out there. They won't really affect anything. There we go, digital craft. All right, I've got this ready. That's good, let's go back, bring my contours in. Zoom out a little bit here. They're in the group, remember? I'm gonna open that up, cut them out of there and choose paste in place. That way they're lined up exactly where they're supposed to be. They're just not in that same group. And I will select them and use Topo Shaper, Update and Reload, Calculate Terrain. Yeah, I like it, generate it. Click to exit. Delete the contour lines. Double click, double click. Select the bottom. Just move that up so it looks a little better. Back to the pick tool, back to the. <clears throat> okay, it's looking good. Just running through this process again. We're gonna move this down a bit. Not that way. Move that down, move that up. Okay. Explode that. So I have the surface and the base. All right, remember the next step, we're going to go to top view, parallel projection, draw a rectangle. Okay, it's just down there, top view. Let's move this up. There we go top, import. In this case, I'm going to bring in that image. Just running through this whole steps again. Good review. 
Killing garden image. Snap it. Bring it in. And now we're going to go to my <coughs> X-ray vision position. And I'm going to use my little green pen to scale that down. Still needs to get a little smaller. Remember, when you scale it, it kind of shifts off a bit. So you just need to, there we go. That is pretty good, but mm. okay. In this case, it's kind of snapping. I'm going to move it out here and see if I can. And if you really having trouble and you're trying to get this closer, I can say done. Probably what I need to do is go up to Window and Model Info and go to units because I just can't snap it. I'm going to go down to 64th. Position. That will And you notice this does rotate, so you really want to make sure that trouble snapping that in there. All right, I don't really like that, so let's do it over again. It doesn't really have to be absolutely perfect. We're really trying to use this to All right, that's pretty good right there. Perfect. I'm just looking at those lines basically lined up so I can make that work. All right, now I can go back to my perspective view. Now I need to make this a projected texture. Get rid of my x-ray vision, don't need that. Got that as a surface. Paint bucket, alt click there. Doesn't work, of course it doesn't. Something buggy in here. Oh wait, it works that time. Did exactly the same thing. Perfect. Okay. So now I have that placed on there. And up here I also have this edge. And there's something in there I don't like. Get rid of that. I've got that and I've got that. So I want to make sure I see those elements in there. Good. Everything looks good. Connected. Separate surfaces. All right, now I'm going to bring in some of those other elements because in order for me to manipulate this landform, you can see here the way it's set up is that this kind of droops over the hill here and that doesn't really work very well. This plaza doesn't drop off like that because the contours are kind of an approximation of the landform and most of it looks pretty good, but you know, there's a little kink right here and I'm going to show you how to use the Artisan plugin to fix that. But in order to do that, we really need to have some other elements in here. So I'm going to import the walls. Back to AutoCAD. OK. Now in this case, this is not unusual. There's something in here. I had a point that was set where it's supposed not supposed to be. So I'm going to just delete that line. Don't really need it. It's just a line that jumps up to another location. And I can see here, if I click on this, I can go to extensions, SU for you, make face, and it makes a face. I'm going to select that, cut it, get out of this group, paste in place, and make that a group. So now it's ready to go down there when I'm ready to work with it. Open it up, push pull. Now in this case, you'll notice, I think this was, I drew this this way on purpose because this ball doesn't actually continue all the way through. 
there's a break here, and in between this space, there's a bunch of boulders that help fill up that area. So I'm going to draw those lines, snap this down, use my eraser tool, and just break that up into two pieces. That will make everything work a little bit better for me. <clears throat> okay, and in order for you to see this, I am going to move it up above here and leave it right there for now. Okay, now I'm going to turn the hidden geometry on, and you can see what's going on here. So this is my plaza area, that fountain feature, water feature is right in here. But it is kind of drooping over there, although it's really pretty, pretty good. But I want to level that out. Now I could, I'm going to make it perfectly level just because it makes it easy to work with, but you don't necessarily have to. I am going to go to my artisan tools and pick the select tool. And I'm going to run down here and just select all these surfaces, even though they go a little beyond what I want. I'll even take that. Yeah. So what I'm looking at, and this just has to do with being familiar with the plaza itself. because I know this whole area is relatively the same elevation. So you can see what I've selected there. I think I don't think I missed anything. I kind of stepped up in here. So I need to level that out. And that's uh, what Artisan's Make Planar tool is for. I click on that. And if I choose best, it will kind of take an average of all the elevations that are in there. But since this drops off a lot, it's going to end up creating a really strong slope. In this case, I'm just going to choose XY, which is a horizontal plane. And you'll see that it just created a perfectly level horizontal plane there. And I may have some other adjustments to do down here, which I will do in a little bit. But right now, that looks pretty good. Now, it's also affected this over here. This is the entrance to the building. And that doesn't really look very good. So I can fix that real quick. I switch to my, switch to my sculpture, sculpt tool. And I'm just going to spin around and uh, that's kind of leveling it out a little bit. Sometimes this tool doesn't really pick up either, so I'm going to try it again. Sculpt tool. There we go. A little better. Yeah. And switch to the smooth. Go in a positive direction. This part over here doesn't really matter that much because there's going to be a building in there. And later on, I can come in here and flat this out. I'm just kind of adjusting it. I am going to work on the other landform. That looks fine. OK, so I've got the basic landform in there, but I still got some issues. If the wall's here, this comes out, the wall actually, the landform actually drops right at the wall there. So how do I deal with that? That's where the wall structure comes in. Now, there's a nice plugin that's already installed here, which is Drop GC. If you click on that group, choose that, it drops it down to match the landform. Then I'm just going to move this down. And I think this wall is, it's not very high. Use a tape measure. I would say that's mm, two foot one. Yeah, around two feet. Any, anywhere around two feet or so sticking up. That looks pretty good. So I just move that down into place. And that's where everything inside of here is going to stay at that level. Everything outside of this, this actually drops down to maybe five feet below on this side. Clearly, that's way too far up there. <clears throat> so how do I do that? Well, the first thing I'm going to do in order to, if I start pulling these down, these lines down, it's going to drop the lines inside the area. So I'm going to use that same command that we've used a lot. Turn off my hidden geometry, select over everything, right click and choose intersect faces with selection. What that's going to do in this case, you'll notice there wasn't a line here before, but now it just created a line. And that means that I can adjust geometry on the outside without really affecting the inside. So go back to my select tool and go across here. 
you can see it's not actually selected anything on the inside there. And I could use the artisan tools, but in this case, I'm simply going to use the move tool and just drop this down to about where I think it goes. Okay, so you can see it's, I don't know, it's around five feet. Let me check the, well, that's three foot seven, that's about four feet. So if I want to move it a little bit more, didn't want to move more than I wanted there. So we'll get the select tool. Choose the move tool. And don't worry about, so I moved it down another, there we go, something like that. Okay, now it did, however, create a little bit of a problem on this side, right? Even though I put that intersection in there, I can see that I've got this edge there. So I need to fix that. I'm going to disconnect this. In this case, I'm just going to grab this wall and cut it. So you can see that there actually is a line in here. If I just select this line, and you can see it's not perfectly even, but I'm just going to pull it up and then adjust it from there. Okay, that one looks pretty good there. So if I take this, use the move tool, get it going in the vertical direction, and just snap it up to match this edge here. Because it was already sloped, it's not perfect, but what I can do go back in here, the move tool, and hit my up arrow key, shift, snap it right to there, grab that point, up arrow key to lock it, shift, snap it to that point, up arrow key to lock it in the vertical, shift, snap to that point, give me the blue, snap to that point. Okay, so I just brought that down so it's nice and level all the way across there. And this one, I'm going to bring that down. And I probably want to pull that all the way down, but I might need to pull some of these down in order to do that. And I'm going to put the wall back in here, so just so you can see it. You know, up arrow key, lock it, pull it down. Up arrow key, lock it, pull it down. So I'm trying to create that up arrow key, lock it, pull it down. All right, it's starting to look like something. And since I had cut that wall, now I can just go to Edit, Paste in Place. And you can start seeing that now I've got the higher elevation on the inside. And I've got a little bit of an issue here. So, yeah, that's not too hard to fix, right? Move tool, kind of combination, hit the escape key, up arrow, shift, hold, block it into there. And there we go, snap it right into place. So, we've got nice, clean, level lines on the inside, a drop on the outside. The building is going to fill in this space here, so I'm not too worried about it. But if you wanted to kind of pull this up, pull this up, we'll do some more manipulation on this landform to adjust it. But remember that there is going to be a building wall cutting through here, so this isn't really going to be visible. And we'll come back and fix all this too. Escape key, up arrow. So that's an intersection. It's not actually the point. So if I have to look at this, you can see. There we go. So I can go through and keep manipulating and adjusting that to get the, the smoothness that I want on there. OK, so that's how we adjust that first level. And then later, we can come in here. I can do it right now. Um, Get my artisan tool. I'm 
no more influence. So, you know, I can just come in here and adjust this. Now, if I get too close, that's what happens. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to stay down here, keep it. And once we add this other retaining wall down here, we may end up smoothing it off a bit, but at least this way, and come in here and just make those adjustments and keep that nice and smooth. It's a great way to do preliminary grading, kind of figure out what you need, what you need, and what you want there. All right, so the next step would be to start cleaning up for things like the stairs. But again, until I know where the stairs are, I can't really do that. So hmm, I don't have them in here. Let's do that. File, import, steps. And they just appear down here. I'm going to grab those, move them up. Make sure you keep them lined vertically. It's a group, so I'm going to get in there. Now, in this case, this is a great example of what happens with these arcs. You can see none of these things are connecting. If I select this, it's a segment, but it has two segments. If I type in 10, select this, 12, select this one, it's one segment, 10. Two, let's make that 15. And you can see if one of these isn't connected, I'm going to grab that right now and I'm going to make that a group. So when I get in there, I'm going to select everything, extend close lines. Select everything. Make face, and it's pretty good except for right here. So there's something going on in here. Usually the first thing I do is check the end. Okay, I just it wasn't quite connected. I would have done the the second edge first, and I got a little piece here that I don't need. So there we go. Now in order to put this down on the landform, I am going to start push pulling this, and we're going to use the six inch steps. So there's, I'm just pulling up, typing six and enter, snap to here, up, six, enter, snap, oopsies, not that, twist around, snap to the last one, let go of the mouse, pull up, six, enter, snap to there, let go of the mouse, pull up, six, enter. So I'm just using that as a <coughs> quick way to set this set of steps up since it's kind of curved and angled. I don't care how far I pull it up, snap to that, pull it up any distance, six enter, and it'll set it to six inches. Allows you to go through that pretty quick. Last one, six enter, done. Okay. Now, since this is a component, I'm going to cut that out of there paste it in place. So I'm just taking it out of the group so I can right click on it and say drop GC. So this is dropping that down and you can see that there's, it's not bad but it doesn't really fit and also that's quite a first step there. So the first thing I'm going to do before I start adjusting the train is use the move tool, start moving it vertically, hold the shift key down and snap it to right there because that's kind of matching the terrain at that point. Okay, that's the first thing I'm going to do. The next thing I'm going to do <coughs> is actually give myself a little more to work with here. So back to Artisan, select these faces all the way around, and let's subdivide those. Click on subdivide, and that gives me a little more detail control. Turn the uh, hidden geometry off. Use my paint bucket, fill that in, turn the hidden geometry back on. Okay, so now I've got the stairs in there somewhere, but I can't really see them very well. Mm, 
don't know if I need more. Well, I'll, let's try it. So I'm going to get my artisan tool, pull this in a bit. and start manipulating this landform. So as I do this, it's going to keep pulling this down. And it's set for auto smooth, so it will, you know, it'll bounce back a little bit. But I'm trying to just get this line along here so I can see it, but I don't have my steps buried. And sometimes you have to go out a little farther on the sides because it's really, it's all connected, right? It's all part of one landform. And if you don't adjust the rest of the landform, and I'm not going to worry too much about every little detail up there. And this might be, there might be a little bit of a bump in here anyway, so I'm going to kind of pull this down. And once you get to a certain point, yeah, this is starting to look a little better over here. Just keep going over it. That's actually looking pretty good, right? The step's going to fit in. Now, this doesn't match here. If I try and pull this up, it's going to pull the landform through the stairs. So what I'll usually do with something like this is eventually draw another surface in to match the top of the steps perfectly. But I just wanted to get those basic steps set in. So I set the top elevation. Then I manipulated the landform with the, and I can, I think I pulled this up a little bit, so I'm going to pull this all back down with the artisan tools to make sure that the sidewalk's kind of coming up nice and smoothly. Set this in the positive direction, go to smooth, make it a little bigger. Run that around, you can see it's not making dramatic changes, it's just kind of smoothing that out a little bit which gives me a nice soft landform there. Perfect. I don't want any big dents or divots in there. Nice smooth entry walk up to the stairway. Okay, so you can see I just used that artisan tool. I'm not worried about the top. I'm just getting everything else in there so it kind of looks like it comes right down along the side of the stairs. And now I've got that regraded to make sure everything matches perfectly. And that's the same process that you would use down here on these stairs, when you drop those down, make them 3D, six inch steps, bring them down, set them close to the top elevation here, and then use the same process. Now in that case, you definitely want to subdivide it because it's way too coarse and you're gonna to have to edit some of this. You can see how that sidewalk actually is kind of sticking up there anyway. And if I try and just manipulate this, it's very coarse. So I want to add more detail in there. Another area, that you're going to want to work with is this area here with the mound. So I would do the same thing. Start with my select tool. Make it a little bit bigger. I'm not going to get into the walkway there. I don't mind overlapping here, down into here. I don't want to really bother my paving area. But I will come down into here, this area. And all this does is give you a little, it gives you a finer grid, so you have finer control over what's happening in here. I'm going to click subdivide. Lost my pattern, so I'll go back to turn hidden geometry off. Paint that. Deselect it. Hidden geometry back on. So now you can see I have a lot more control there, a lot more detail. I'm going to take this area, the first thing I'm going to do, I really need this to be a little smoother. So I'll take a selection, make planar. In this case, I'm going to use best. And you can see it just adjusted that perfectly. So now that's sloping planar surface. Now the rest of this mound doesn't look too bad, but it's just a little coarse. So I am going to try smoothing that off first of all. Right click, sculpt. Right click smooth. Now sometimes it doesn't look like it's doing anything. So I'm going to exit out of that, grab this, 
try the sculpt tool. It's kind of auto smoothing. I'm going to pull that up a little bit there. And I just adjusted that, so I'm going to pull that in a little bit. Now smooth. There we go. Sometimes that doesn't activate perfectly. You just have to go in. So this is really smoothing that landform off. So now I get that nice kind of mounded feeling without the sensation that there's lots of jagged edges in there. Click and drag over it, move it around. And if you get a piece like this that ends up, change that a little bit. Go back to your select tool. Grab those edges. Make planar, best, that'll just that right in there. Okay. So we're just cleaning this landform up, making everything ready for walls, for steps, uh, to make sure that the top and the bottom of the step are where they should be and you have everything exposed. These other seating areas here, they actually looked pretty good. They're not too distorted, so you probably don't have to do anything to them. Uh, the seating area where the stones are, where the seating boulders are, same thing. Let's go over here. Let's select all that area with the select tool. And let's subdivide that. And so I can see what I'm doing. Turn hidden geometry off. Fill it. I just need to see that picture. We'll turn it back on. Perfect. Now I've got a little more control. I'll get my sculpt tool. I'm going out beyond that a little bit because that's the only way I can actually pull that up. Now this does have a little slope on it, so I don't have to make it perfectly level, but I think it needs a little bit of adjustment. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to switch to my smooth. Smooth kind of just evens things out a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. All right, maybe I'll pull this up a little bit. There we go. So it doesn't look like it's dropping off the hill. So again, if you have to make those adjustments, then smooth it out. It's really amazing contouring tool that you can really design landforms just like you would with a model in clay. All right, looking good. So this is actually a little retention area here, so I might switch back to my sculpt tool and take that down a bit because it's supposed to be an area to kind of hold water in there. There we go. Just to make it look like it's blended off there a little bit. Yeah, perfect. Okay, like that. Yeah, let's go smooth, make it positive, and we'll just soften that transition there. So most of this is just, I'm just using my eye to do this. I'm changing positions, I'm looking at that, and I'm just trying to mold the landform like I was out there with a front end loader or a backhoe or a bulldozer to grade this off the way I want. Okay, that looks great. And that's kind of the final step of just getting everything worked in there. We'll come back later and add this wall in, maybe do some other adjustments. But that allows us to create uh, really clean landforms that match the structures really well. And then we'll go through and do the draping process um, to make sure that uh, everything fits. Turn the hidden geometry off. And now you can see it's a lot better. It actually fits. Uh, the intent of this design. We've got a nice level plaza. We've got a retaining wall that drops off on the right, but it's level on the left. We've got our stairs. This comes up nice and even. Our seating areas are level and evenly sloped. And we can see that even our pathways as they go down, they're kind of dropping down the hill just the way we want them to. Okay, so that's kind of the process of setting up that landform. And then the next step, we'll go through and drape the rest of the um, landform features, the walkways, the curbs, all that stuff on there. And I'll show you how to, how to use uh, another plugin to be able to uh, create the curve drop and set some other things up.